Anyone? What is meaning of defensibility here, sir? At a point. 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 At which? Then what is derivative? Slope of the function. Every function is having slope. Oh, what is the uh, which kind of thing is having slope? Function is having slow, uh, slope or something else is having slope. What is slope? No idea. Suppose this one is your function or curve, you better you can call it curve. Then you come up with uh, your approach is always point wise approach. So call C, there is a point C. Then at this point, you come up with a tangent to the function at that point. You try to define a tangent to the function at that point. And afterward, what is happening that tangent always happens to be a line. It is a line. Tangent is a line. And uh, uh, if it is a line, then line is always having unique characterization that you can you need always uh, how, uh, how many parameters you do you need, do you need to in order to completely characterize a line how you write the equation of a line anyone how many information you need in uh, in order to write a uh, equation of a line it is just a part of geometry uh, coordinate geometry how many information you need three Everything is wrong. Actually, no, no one are in correct. Uh, say, actually, uh, not giving attention to the equation. It's just a, a right equation of a line. So, if you are in 2D, so in 2D, then generally a linear equation of the form ax plus by uh, plus c equal to zero. It represent a line. Now, tell me how many parameter uh, you observe here. There are two kind of things which vary here. One is parameter, another one is variable. So uh, I just uh, I don't want to take much time. I just uh, myself uh, uh, here clear it. Try to clear it. Uh, so x y we will call it variable. These are variable a b c which are coming. What, what is name of a b c? What is name of a b c? parameter or coefficient so what you know then from there you also you can answer so coefficient word you might have already seen that so you call it coefficient later we will call it parameters if uh, uh, variable varies what happened you are having a moving point that uh, you are having a geometric structure and variable vary then in the same geometric structure you keep on moving so if, if uh, x equal to 1 then y equal to would be something and you will move along this way only this uh, line okay so that is meaning of variable that means you are not leaving the that geome specific geometric structure you are not leaving you are in the same structure tell me if uh, coefficient or parameter vary what does it happen why uh, right now don't talk slope here i haven't discussed slope uh, if you this coefficient va will vary then your system will vary so right now if you x y vary then system is not going to vary uh, going to va vary only point will move in that the same system but if you uh, coming with uh, different parameter different coefficient you are changing the system so if some, suppose you are getting this uh, like a uh, 2x uh, okay 
<coughs> simply I, I I am giving a general name it would be this point is call it minus two this point is two okay uh, and right now call it uh, a1 x plus b1 x y plus c1 equal to 0 now you change the value of a1 b2 a1 a1 b1 c1 to another value you will get another line a2 x plus b2 y plus c2 equal to 0 if you are changing the coefficient of parameter then you are getting variation in the system this one is system 1 or line 1 this one is system 2 line 2 so if with respect to variation in coefficient or parameter you are getting various uh, systems but with respect to variation in uh, variable you are in the same system but point is moving in the system point is that is the difference between uh, co variability of coefficient and variability of variables so that is the difference so uh, that what we discuss uh, <coughs> regarding this system now second observation is that what is second observation tell me how many mm, parameter you or coefficient you observe here three any other two okay apart from that now tell me if so one is saying three how it is three and how it is two how two only two parameter or coefficient are what is constant meaning is that don't call it constant c c simply it is not constant c may be anything any real number that that may also vary so the, if it is then again you are saying that it is three then why uh, uh, only it is three because, but we are talking about it is a line a line is having a really interesting feature that just try to figure out how many coefficient you observe here so you mentioned that three but you are wrong there are only two coefficients what are those c is just coming with uh, what is the it is multiple of one so you can throw out divide c and yeah so simply you will have two coefficient a1 dash plus b1 dash y plus one one is known to you you know one is no more uh, variable uh, variability in one it is very much fixed so that's why uh, here if you talk about uh, line then line is having only two coefficient that means line needs only two information so if you are willing to write equation of line just you need two information so what are those two information either you go for slope intercept for form the, like uh, y equal to m x plus c m we are calling it slope slope of the line and c we are calling it intercept or you go for point point in uh, <coughs> uh, two point form like uh, y minus y1 equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 into x minus x1 so what information here you need you just need two point one point is x1 y1 another point is x2 y2 just two information you need x2 y2 if you are having two points you can always find a unique line 
passing through those two points. So if you are having a given slope uh, and intercept, then you can always find a unique line. If you are further intercept point for one point and uh, sorry uh, slope in point form that means you are having you know that line is passing through uh, one point with particular slope then you can write it like this way this one is the third approach so always you are having only two information you don't need more than two information in order to write a line so it is all about a story of a line you need just two information exactly two information you need exactly two, two information if you having one less than <coughs> two information how many line would be possible if you are having only one information there would be infinitely many line under determined system that we are calling it if you are having more than two information then situation would be different over determined that means whatever things uh, whatever information you, uh, you you are needed you are having more than that so over determined system so under uh, so under determined and over determined both are bad you just uh, stick with the exact work you just need two information so here i i just come up with line idea of a line but my uh, discussion was just limited to uh, my discussion is just limited to here when we are talking about uh, line then line is having a slope line is having a slope it is not like that any curve will talk about line so in the concept of differentiality of a function or derivative of a, uh, a function at a point then first we need to define a line that line is actually very important line that we we call it it is a very specific line that line we are calling it tangent line we come up with a line which is touching the graph of curve at a point at a single point and due to that it becomes we are calling it a tangent line and the slope of that line we will call it derivative of the function at that point so line is having slope it is not like curve is having slope line is having slope so what line tangent line so through that now if someone is saying that uh, uh, if line is a slope to this curve what about uh, curve is uh, having relation with the tangent line then curve is also tangent to the line that vice versa relation is there if line is tangent to a curve then uh, in the reverse curve is also tangent to line so that concept you need to recall all those from your high school tangent line so line is having slope and that we will discuss in detail here further so coming to outline of this lecture that uh, we will discuss about uh, derivative differentiality of a function at a point then we will talk about derivative function then we will talk about further examples and there are various other results uh, based on differentiality of a function at a point so right now everywhere we are talking at a point at a point that is in a small neighborhood of a point so here we are coming to derivative function uh, differentiality at a point how we will define it so we are defining like this way uh, we define it via tangent line uh, through different points on the curve tangent line to uh, through so like here here if you take we are taking a curve this uh, this dark line it is it is a curve dark curve it is a given function it is talking about so if you come up with various point then at various point what is your first job uh, trace out the tangent at those point trace out the tangent that will leads to idea of differentiability at that point or derivative of at those point uh, so at this just trace out the uh, tangent line and define uh, at each point in a at each at each point means in a small level of point define this ratio what does it talk about this ratio is what what is name of this ratio anyone What is name of this ratio? What? It is it is something something it will have name. So what is name of that? Slope of the a slope of second. 
because here you uh, right now when you are coming with uh, various uh, points like this way and uh, there uh, you define a small neighborhood you are defining a small suppose you are here situation like this way uh, then suppose you are here at this point call this point is x arbitrary point x this point could be neighboring point x plus h h amount you have just uh, proceed in right direction then if this point is x then corresponding personal value would be what f of x f of x now at if you come to see here at this point uh, let me write it in a bigger uh, zoom version so it would be more clear picture x of remember that h is very small as small as possible you can take it so uh, here just i have taken zoom version so at x plus h function value would be this point would be f of x plus h now here you are having two point one point is this one on the graph of the function focus on only graph of the function one point is x comma f of x another point is uh, x of x plus h comma f of x plus h okay so just apply the idea of two point approach of uh, defining a line so such line would be what this is this this is the that this is that line and what is name of this line with respect to this curve we are calling it it uh, it is a it is a second we are calling it it is a second okay so <coughs> for this uh, uh, line second line we can define slope so what would be slope slope would be this ratio f of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by this uh, this horizontal width is what how much it is h so you can just always you push yourself to the curve to near to curve so here uh, this is the width horizontal width and what is the vertical height what is this height this is the vertical height horizontal width is h and vertical width is f of x plus h minus f of x then for this second line you are defining slope now uh, this one is already done for second line the limiting concept is coming here the, this limiting concept is coming what we are taking limit when we, h is approaching to zero when h is approaching to zero x plus h will approach to x so right word from right we try to approach x so that concept is coming here so in that case it becomes a limiting slope limiting slope and when h is approaching to zero and hence x plus h is approaching to x where second line will approach what does it uh, what does it become the second line it will move it will moves and it becomes tangent just it will confine to the point x the arbitrary point x so it in that there is a movement so it becomes movement so you will get a new line and what is the name of this line this one is second give name to this it is second
second line passing through f of uh, x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h and after taking limiting case of this uh, slope of this line second line you when h is approaching to zero then you are getting this second line what is the name of this one this one is tangent tangent line so you can easily see that tangent line needs only one point so it is talking about instantaneous touching to the curve when h is approaching that one is meaning of instantaneous touching that is it is going to touch that curve at a point at a point we are calling it at a point so that is the meaning of uh, so slope of the tangent so that's why we are saying that uh, here in that case what concept is coming so here slope just in this case uh, this quantity it becomes f dash x that we are calling it slope of the tangent at x remember that you read it slope of the tangent at x we read it. and that also you can say that differentiability of the function at x or, or derivative of the function at a slope of the tangent at x it is a pure limiting case at x so that is the concept of differentiality of a function at a point So we will discuss further in term of if silent delta that means say in the same framework remember that if you are taking a function which is defined over an interval so we will go through interval wise it is not like that uh, uh, that domain of the function would be any arbitrary cent here we have to deal with interval wise that means uh, so that we can talk about uh, a small neighborhood of uh, point at which we are defining differentiality and c happens to be uh, any member of this interval then we say that a, a real number l it would be a derivative of the function at c if for given any epsilon there exists delta such that uh, again and it is a what uh, it is a concept of limiting situation limiting of uh, limit of a very specific kind of function that we call it divided difference also you can call this difference divided difference because it is ratio of the uh, functional value divided by uh, functional value and and the corresponding argument so that's why also you can say that it is divided difference in short you can call it dd okay so uh, <coughs> this divided difference is approaching to l when uh, we are taking any x from the deleted uh, neighborhood of uh, c so here this one is talking about uh, i have already mentioned several times x is not equal to c first infinity is talking about x is not equal to c and second infinity is talking about x is coming from delta neighborhood of c delta neighborhood of c that means uh, if you open up then it is an interval c minus delta c plus delta same situation is so if you are taking any x from here in that case uh, this divided difference would be epsilon within epsilon of l within epsilon of l and hence we will claim that this l is the derivative of the function at c okay so uh, <coughs> like uh, if you take any uh, point c and then uh, we say that uh, f dash x we define it like this way as, as this limit this is the limiting the limiting form so f dash x that means derivative of f at c it is defined through this limit provided this limit exists if this limit doesn't exist then simply we say that this function is not differentiable if limit exists then we say that function is differentiable so i will take few example simple example is all these are so if i am talking about uh, x square function this quadratic function then uh, uh, so if i talk about what is the derivative function then derivative function of this one is twice of x then uh, uh, how we are getting twice of x we are getting twice of x through point wise representation through point wise approach that means uh, we come up with uh, an orbit point x and uh, we find derivative of uh, that function at that point uh, point through the first principle uh, first principle concept that uh, concept is coming like this so first what, what is first principle concept 
it is same the definition of derivative at a point arbitrary point x so this is the first principle so you simplify it and you might have already done practice over that first principle approach that uh, when you talk about uh, h is approaching to zero of the divided limiting value of the divided difference x plus h minus f of x here x is arbitrary and take the limit of this divided difference and simplify from the first principle you come to see that uh, this one is coming as twice of x it is equal to twice of x so always derivative function for this quadratic function it would be always a linear function it is always li a linear function you can observe that if you are taking quadratic function it will be always linear directly it will talk about the associated line okay it will talk about so that uh, picture of all those tangent you can observe like this way these are the tangent these are the possible tangent at uh, various points so this, uh, if you are drawing tangent at uh, point minus one then you will see that so uh, to draw tangent line you need two information here one information you need it uh, f dash x as a slope of the tangent usually so you will get and second information you will uh, what you will need what is the second information anyone what is the second information intercept at which point or point better take it here point to point form because you know about uh, you are trying to find derivative of a function at a point then if you uh, are willing to find derivative function at a point that you know value of uh, that particular x and hence you also you know the value of f of that particular x so that's where uh, uh, this one is the for result of uh, slope point form okay it just skipped away so uh, in that situation simply i would like to highlight that uh, it is talking about uh, uh, about uh, one is slope of the tangent it is coming due to definition of derivative at a point and second one is coming with respect to what we call it point what is that point that point happens to be x comma f of x so you are having point and you are having uh, uh, slope so easily you can write equation of tangent easily you can write so you are having both the information always you can write so this one is really interesting uh, result based on derivative that carathedry uh, theorem and uh, later you will see that uh, uh, it will be related with the mean value theorem I will recall that mean value theorem later and uh, there is one more interesting rule also chain rule that we apply and chain rule is just what we call it it is just uh, uh, one application of uh, composition function composition com composition of function so the carathedry rule it says that if you are having a function which is defined over a interval which, which, which is containing a point C that f is differentiable at c if and only if uh, there exists a function phi on the interval that one is continuous at c that means differentiability of f is guaranteed by continuity of phi so how how that one is possible so when s phi is satisfying this uh, relation that means in short you can say that uh, phi is the divided difference of f of x and f of c divided difference the f phi of x okay so in this case also we can say that uh, what is the then uh, what is the value if uh, phi is continuous then what is the value of phi at c it is just equal to derivative of the function at that point and uh, it is just a uh, situation is coming like this way uh, you can look into the concept that i had uh, what i had discussed about continuous extension uh, criteria that uh, if you try to see the form of phi of x then easily you can say that this function is not defined uh, at c the phi of x we are defining as a divided difference uh, f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c so clearly this divided difference is not defined x equal to c so here we are putting condition x that x should not be equal to c then if x is equal to c then what would what would be value of phi 
the value of pi would be f dash c when x is equal to c why because we know that when we take limit x tends to c then this ratio will approach to f dash c from the derivative so that's why uh, here simply the function phi of x we are defined like this way easily we we can say that if f is differentiable at c then it simply implies that corresponding phi function phi would be continuous at c that is the scenario characteristic approach what we are calling it later i will call it mean middle theorem okay another rule is coming as a chain rule everyone might be aware of chain rule so i don't have to explain it further so simply we are taking two function g and f that happens to be so uh, <coughs> happens to be uh, f is differentiable at c or you can say that uh, f is what uh, composition always act from left A composition operation that always act from left so f you can say that it is the first function g is the second function uh, it is coming uh, acting from left so that's why g is the second function if f is differentiable at c and g is differentiable at f of c then the composition function g of f would be differentiable at c okay and in that process what is the derivative of the composed version of g of f it would be just what uh, what is happening that uh, just apply the chain rule principle what does it say that look into the argument like uh, here if you open up this composition function then this composition function at uh, c what it would be it would be through the definition of composition it would be uh, g of f of x f of c g of f of c so it is like this way so if you talk about focus on g then what is the argument of g argument of g is f of c and argument of f is c so uh, here if in <coughs> left hand side we, we are differentiating this one with respect to c we are differentiating with respect to c so here that's where chain rule is coming so this g, function g is having argument f of c it is not c is not argument of g f of c is argument of g so that's where we will apply here chain rule that means we difference we need to differentiate g with respect to the corresponding argument of g that happens to be f of c and f of c is having argument c so that's where here it is coming uh, differentiation of f of c with respect to c that is the chain rule uh, ultimate chain rule what we are, we are calling it so we will see various application of chain rule so that's where here so you can remember that dash is putting here what does it mean this dash is talking about derivative of g with respect to the corresponding argument and argument of g is f of c that's where this this dash is different from this dash this dash is talking about derivative of g with respect to f of c and this dash is talking about derivative of uh, f with respect to argument of f that happens to be c so the, here both dash are having different meaning. that means both derivative are having different meaning you have to focus on the corresponding argument likewise also uh, this composition function uh, this dash is talking about uh, derivative of this composed function with respect to the argument call it uh, the argument corresponding argument is c that means we are integrating and uh, differentiating with respect to c so all these are, these are the meaning of the things that you need to see the difference between all what are the difference between these things so we will take one example here a very interesting example that one is just uh, again consequences of uh, last case that uh, chain rule and uh, we will try to merge it with uh, ab absolute value function and do we have time okay we don't have time other things we will discuss in next class just regarding attendance uh, uh, put your roll number in comment box and uh, again my suggestion would be that uh, Keep on asking, putting your question there in, uh, yes.